this camera was released maybe three months ago, I couldn't help thinking that this is too good to be true. Like this is almost a perfect product. So yeah, let's get started. So I've been using this camera for a couple of months now, so I've basically like used this camera in almost every situation. I've shot photos, I've shot videos, I've basically done everything with it. I shot vlog, I shot normal video, I shot like I've like I've done everything with this camera, so like I know what I'm talking about. So let's get started with the design and build quality. <laughs> The camera is really lightweight, coming only at one pound, which is pretty impressive, especially considering like the capabilities of this camera. So think about it like this. This camera is basically like a R6 Mark II shrunk down. So like it has the same sensor, the same autofocus system. It just has like a lot of the same stuff. The only difference being is that it does not shoot 6K. In fact, it shoots over 4K over sampled. And also it has like, it doesn't have like a full HDMI. It's also missing a couple of ports. Other than that, it's like, it's high quality, you know, just like normal Canon stuff. Although one of the issues I found with the design of this camera being small is that the SD card slot is on the bottom, right? So like on your average camera, like, like a, or five or like basically anything the SD card slots are like on the side but for this it's on the bottom with the battery so like if you have the camera on a table and you're gonna take like the SD card slot out to like put it in your computer instead of just like uh, you know opening the the card thing and like taking it out you actually have to like lift the camera and then you can like take the thing out from like from like the bottom other than that it's been pretty good I also like the fact that it's like lightweight, so like even if you carry it in a bag, you don't actually feel the weight. And also when you're holding it for like a long time, you're like, your hands don't feel that tired. Especially if you have like a lightweight lens like this one. Next, let's talk about the image quality and like the camera sensor. So it has a full frame sensor, same as the R6 Mark II again. It produces like amazing pictures, especially like in low light and stuff. Told you, it's basically same for photos. It's basically the same thing as an R6 Mark II. You know, nice photos. And I'm also able to like raise the ISO like pretty high without actually sacrificing that much image quality. So if you're to compare this with your phone, if you shoot at night, you do realize how like the thing is all grainy and stuff. Unless you're gonna put night mode, which is another story because like that basically reduces the shutter speed. So it's gonna be either too bright it's gonna look unrealistic and also you need to hold your phone still but for this just raise the ISO pretty high shoot it it does have a 400 base ISO that uh, that ISO has the lowest green I haven't really noticed that much differences as I said you can raise it, it doesn't really make that much difference unless you're going like really high like like I'm talking high, like 12, 6,000, 12,000 ISO. That's when you actually start noticing like the effects of like a high ISO. Other than that, it's pretty good. It also has up to a 40 FPS electronic shutter and a 30 FPS raw burst. Now let's talk about autofocus. So as I said, same autofocus as the R6 Mark II. So like if you watch any reviews of that, just basically consider it as being the same. Right now I'm recording an autofocus so you can actually tell. And bear in mind, this video is being shot on, on the R8, 4K, 30 frames per second, and also on log. It also has really nice like eye tracking. And like the touch function of the, uh, of the autofocus system is just really good. Just like you just tap it on your, like your face or whatever it is on the screen, whatever object, and then it just like, boom, just focused, you know what I'm saying? And if you're like moving or anything, you're shooting cars, moving, anything moving, it'll also, it's like fast. So like, even if I'm like moving like this, like this, you see it, I'm still in focus. Okay, now let's talk about the video capabilities. So it has really high video capabilities, especially for the size, it's like really shocking. So it's able to shoot C-Log3. It also has a high frame rate options up to 4K 60 frames per second. And if you were to shoot in like 1080p, it would go up to like 180 frames per second, which is really good if you want those like slow motion shots. And bear in mind, as I said, 6K, uh, 4K over sample. That means it's basically taking 6K and down sampling it to 4K. 
Okay, now let's talk about the battery life. So it does have an LPE17 battery instead of like the like the LPE6 on like the R5, the R6, and even like the regular R. It's all right. I mean, like the battery is pretty good. As long as you have like a couple of batteries, you should be good for the day. It basically has the same battery as the RP. If you have like one of those, you you know what I'm talking about. It's like all right. It's not that good, but like it could last pretty long. And for the price and value, this camera costs 1500 bucks. It's like really high value, especially considering like it's almost like a thousand dollars less than the R6 Mark II for basically like the same camera. So, so it's like pretty good. I mean, if you're getting this for like a business or something as an investment, this is like a perfect investment. It's good as a secondary camera, a main camera. And, uh, and because it's small, it overheats pretty quickly. So I wouldn't say it's the best for a main camera if you're shooting all day. But other than that, if you have like a, you know, a backup camera kind of thing, this would be like a perfect backup camera. So pretty much that's it. And if you've made it till here, you might as well just subscribe. So yeah.